There is one action that every engineer, whether you're a college student, an intern, recent graduate, CEO of a company should be taking periodically throughout your career. I recommend every 90 days. And that action is goal setting. If you're not setting clear goals and moving towards them in your career, then where are you headed? How do you know where you're going? How do you know where you're going to end up? I know the goal setting process can be overwhelming, but in this episode, I am going to give you three very clearly defined steps, which we as engineers love, to do effective goal setting that will drive you in your career. And you can also use this process to set personal goals. Please do this every 90 days in your career and your career will take off. Let's jump right in. First, a quick word from our sponsor. Before we dive in, we'd like to recognize our sponsor for this episode, PPI, a leader in engineering exam prep for the FE and PE exams. PPI provides expert prep courses and study resources designed to help you pass the FE and PE exams the first time. PPI's live online courses include hours of lectures, problem-solving demonstrations, exam strategy sessions, office hours, and a passing guarantee. Check out PPI today at ppi2pass.com to see all the options available for FE and PE exam prep. Now let's dive into today's episode. All right, so what we're going to do in this episode is we're going to talk about goal setting, and it's a great time of the year to think about goal setting. Realistically, it's a good idea to set goals every 90 days, not once a year, but most people do it at the beginning of the year, which is why we're publishing this episode in December. But I hope that you can apply this process periodically throughout the year because it's nicer to have shorter goals to sprint towards as opposed to goals every year, unless you're really good about checking in on your goals and monitoring them from time to time. All right. So the way we're going to do this episode is we're kind of going to do it in three different phases. The first phase, I want to talk a little bit about why goals are important, because I know some of you are thinking, I don't really need goals. I don't write them down. I have them in my head. So I kind of want to get you excited about goals. The second phase is I'll talk about some of the different types of goals that you can think about setting. And then lastly, I'll give you some steps for setting goals. All right. So we'll kind of cover those three phases. Why are goals important? What kinds of goals are there and how can you go about setting them? All right. So let's start with why goals are important. One of the biggest reason goals are important is because they keep you focused and help you to avoid, you know, that shiny object syndrome where you're kind of getting distracted by a lot of different things. I have about 15,000 plus LinkedIn connections, mostly engineers, and I get a lot of messages. I don't get to respond to all of them, but I got a lot of direct messages asking me career related questions. Should I get a master's degree? Should I go to this school? Should I work for this company? Should I take a job with a bigger company or smaller company? design or construction. And when I answer those questions, the first question that I ask is, tell me about your career goals, right? Because you should be making decisions that are going to help you to achieve those goals. A couple years ago on the podcast, one of my guests recommended a great book, Where Will You Be Five Years From Today? And it's an easy book to read. I recommend it. We can put a link in the show notes. But the point is that if you want to be somewhere in five years from now, you need to think about it today. You need to start to chart out some of the actions you're going to take. And those goals, those five-year goals, let's say, are driving your decisions every day. So that's one big benefit of goals is they keep you focused. Goals also encourage you to take action. Right? There's a million things we can do in our career and in our lives. And if we have goals, we can drill down further and come up with the action steps to get us towards those goals and literally start to take action. Right. So it's kind of like if any of you are project managers and you create like a work breakdown structure for your projects that like your to do list for your projects, a goal forces you to create a to do list to get you to where you want to go. And that's really important. Another thing about goals is they're really kind of forcing us to continuously improve. And that's something that every engineer should do from day one in their career till the day they retire. Right. And if you have goals that are pushing you and stretching you, you're just going to be forced to improve. And the last one is goal setting keeps you accountable. So what do I mean by that? Accountability, if you're not familiar with the word, means it's someone that's holding you to do what you said you're going to do. In this case, your goals. Now, it works better if you take those goals and you share them with someone else, whether it is an accountability partner, meaning like, hey, you and another engineer, your friends, your colleagues, you both set goals and you show the other each other the other one's goals and that you maybe meet once a month and you hold each other accountable. If you have a mentor, they can hold you accountable on your goals. Could be a spouse or a friend, supervisor. 
I remember for me, I had a goal of getting my professional engineering license. So when I signed up for the exam, I told my supervisor that this is the day I'm taking the exam. And it provided some really good accountability for me. So if you set goals and if you're public about those goals, they can create some really good accountability for you, which can definitely be a driver in your career, right? Because without accountability, we may not take that action that I talked about before. All right. So those are some of the benefits of setting goals, right? They keep you focused. You avoid the shiny object syndrome, which a lot of us will chase down things that aren't that important. They encourage you to take action. They encourage continuous improvement and they will help to hold you accountable. All right. Let's jump into our second phase or second bucket here of our episode today, which is what are the types of goals? All right. So there are three types of goals, process, performance, and outcome. Right. So process goals are very specific actions or processes that you want to engage in on a regular basis. Like, so for example, let's say that you want to get better at a certain software like BIM or a certain CAD program or something along those lines. You might have a goal to do that two hours every day or one hour every day or five hours every week. Right. That's a process goal. And that's a hundred percent controlled by you, the individual. Right. I'm going to a lot of time on my calendar and I'm going to get that done. Right. Secondly, you have a performance goal and a performance goal is what it is, right? It's based on a personal standard that you might set. For example, if you're a student right now, you might have a standard of a 3.5 GPA for yourself, right? If you're working professionally, you might have a utilization goal of being billable 35 hours a week or 40 hours a week. Right. And again, performance goals are also mostly controllable by you, right? The individual. You set the goal, you know what the number is, it's up to you to go after it and get it. And the last one is outcome goals. And outcome goals are essentially based on outcomes or the idea of winning, right? So for a college student, this might be landing an internship or landing a job as a recent graduate, right? Um, For a working professional, it might mean getting your PE license or obtaining a new client or something along those lines that are very outcome driven. Now, outcome goals are less controlled by you because there are outside influences, right? So you might say, I'm going to win if I get a job with this specific engineering company in the town that I live in. And that company's just not hiring right now, right? You can't control that right now. You can obviously control parts of it. You could do your part, but there are some outside factors to keep in mind, right? So those are the three types of goal process, performance, and outcome. So decide on what you're best for you. And you might have a mix of them. Right. Generally speaking, I recommend having about 10 goals at any one time between personal and professional. So some of those might be process, might be performance, might be outcome, right? just depending on how you go about setting. All right. So that's kind of the second phase I wanted to cover the three different types of goals. All right. Now I want to get into the third phase of this episode, the final phase, which is going to be setting goals. All right. So hopefully at this point you are, I've kind of convinced you that goals are important, right? I gave you the benefits to them. Um, I talked about the different kinds. So you have some ideas of the goals that you can set. Now I want to give you a process for setting goals, all right? And I'll, I'll give this to you. It's, it's a great process. It's a three-step process for goal setting. I talk about this a lot in our engineering leadership accelerator course. The first step is to define your values and what I like to call pillars. So what I mean by that is ask yourself what's important to you in work and life. Right? Do you like working on certain types of projects? Do you want to work for a certain size company? Do you want to be involved in the community? Do you need to be close to a location to be close to family? Right? What are all the things that you hold important to you in your life, both personally and professionally? Once you have all those, you take a piece of paper, you can write them all on a piece of paper and you know, you know, type them on your computer and then take a piece of paper and draw three or four circles and take the like-minded values and put them into the same circle. So for example, if family and friends are important to you, they go in the same circle. If you have honesty and integrity on your list, they might go in the same circle because they're similar. And ultimately what you're trying to accomplish is three or four pillars. And just to give you an example of this, I'll give you an example of my four pillars. One is helping people. One is family. One is travel and exploration, and one is responsibilities and challenges. If you think about what I do at the Engineering Management Institute, I'm working with our team to help engineers become better managers and leaders. Am I helping people? Yes. Do I get to travel? Yes, for training and conferences from time to time. Do I have a lot of responsibilities and challenges? I believe I do, yes. And as far as family goes, I have the ability to set my schedule and try to make it flexible around family needs. 
So I'm really hitting a lot of my pillars. All right, so you wanna take the time in your first step to really set those foundational pillars before you actually go into goal setting. So now let's go to step two, set your goals. I'm gonna give you a very simple recipe for setting your goals that you're gonna love as an engineer because it's a very well-defined, stepped out process of basically asking yourself four questions. Where do I wanna be in X amount of time, two years, five years, 10 years? You pick the time frame that works for you. I recommend examining a short-term and a long-term time frame. Second question, why do I wanna be there? And that's the important question. If you tell me that you wanna be the president of your company in 10 years, or the uh, you wanna start a new committee for your professional association in a year from now, you need to be able to answer the question of why you wanna do that. And as, as far as being president or a high level leader in an organization, you might say to me, well, I wanna be a leader in my community. I wanna work on awesome projects and I wanna make enough money to support my family. So I might say to you, okay, so your real goal is you wanna be a leader in your community and support your family. You've chosen the idea of being president of your company because that's one avenue to get you there, but it's not the only avenue. And that's important because if that route doesn't work out, that doesn't mean that you're completely cut off from your goals. You may be able to find another route to get there. All right, so where do you wanna be short-term, long-term? Why do you wanna be there? Once you know those things, the rest is really easy. The third question is what steps do I need to take to achieve those goals, right? So if one of your goals is to have a PE license in two years from now, right? You know the why for it. It's gonna help me get promoted in my company, et cetera. What do I need to do? I need to figure out what's required in my state, get the application, find sponsors, and so on and so forth. And by the way, if that is one of your goals, we've got two great YouTube channels, Pass the FE Exam and Pass the PE Exam. You can find those at pepasspoint.com. Tons of good videos to help you with that. This is just an example goal though, right? right? So you can create the list of action steps. And the fourth and final question is, who can help me get there? No one ever asked this question. You take the time to go through and figure out your goals. Now think about the people that you know, people that you work with, colleagues, friends, friends, family members, look at those goals and say, who's achieved this goal? Who knows about this? Who can help me get there faster? Or on my time period, it doesn't matter, but who can help you? All right, so step one, define your values and ultimately pillars. Step two, go through a series of questions. Where do I wanna go in my career? Why, what steps will it take? And who can help me, right? And an important part of finishing step two before you go to step three is making sure that the goals that you set align with the pillars that you set in step one. I gave you my example of how my four pillars really lined up with my day-to-day -day work. They need to line up. The example or the analogy I often give is, imagine goal setting is building a house. The step one, defining your pillars is the foundation, and then the goals are the house that you put on top of that foundation. If the foundation is not aligned with the house, eventually the house is gonna come down. And usually the way that manifests itself is that you just stop working on the goals because they're not interesting or exciting to you. That means they're not lined up with your true values and your wants and desires. All right, and the third and final step in this last kind of phase here is to make your goal SMART. Okay, SMART is a proven acronym that's been around for many, many years. It stands for Specific, Measurable, Attainable, Relevant, and Time Bound. Okay, SMART. Take each of your goals, go through them, and make them SMART. Ask yourself the question, is my goal specific? It has to be. If it's not specific, you're not gonna be able to track your progress and know how far along you are which will make it very difficult. So again, if we wanted to use the example of getting a PE license, is it specific? It's extremely specific. Is your goal measurable? Well, getting a PE license is very measurable, right? I either get it or I don't. If you have a goal that becomes hard to measure, you won't know if you're on track. And that can be dangerous because you could spend a lot of time working on something and be nowhere near achieving it. The A stands for attainable. Is a PE license attainable? We know it is because thousands of people have already achieved it, are, is it relevant? Is getting a PE license relevant to where you wanna go in your career? That's where you can back up and look at your goals and say, is it relevant? If I wanna become a president or a partner in my firm and a PE license is required, it's 100% relevant, right? I was once doing a coaching call with an engineer and she was getting her master's degree in engineering and I asked her about her larger goals in her career and life and I asked her, will this master's degree help you achieve those goals? And she paused for a minute. She said, no, actually it won't. And she ended up canceling her master's degree and looking for other ways to get her closer to her goals. So it has to be relevant to where you wanna go. And the T stands for time bound. In all walks of life, having a deadline, and you should know this as an engineer, having a deadline will move you towards a goal faster and with more focus. And so the same should apply to our goals. So in the example of a PE license, <clears throat> as I said earlier, sign up for the exam, 
and publicly tell people and commit to it, there's your deadline. All right. So specific, measurable, attainable, relevant, and time. All right. So we're getting towards the end of the year. I hope that in this episode, I've given you a solid process that you can use to create goals that are going to get you to where you want to go in your career. Let's quickly recap kind of the three phases that I went through for you. The first one, we just talked about, generally speaking, the benefits of goal setting. And there are many benefits, right? It keeps you focused, forces you to take action, keeps you improving continuously in your career and can hold you accountable, right? We talked about the three different types of goals that you can set in your career. You can set process goals, you can set performance goals, you can set outcome goals. Process and performance are pretty much controlled by you 100%. Outcome goals may be impacted by other outside parties. And then lastly, we talked about phase three. I took you through a three-step goal setting process, right? Defining your values and turning them into those foundational pillars. Step two, asking the four questions to help you determine what your goals are, right? Questions being, where do I want to be in my career short and long term? Why do I want to be there? Really important. What steps do I need to take or what actions do I need to take? And then lastly, who can help me to take those steps and achieve those goals? All right. And then last but not least in the goal setting process is to make your goals smart, specific, measurable, attainable, relevant, and time bound. I hope you found this episode valuable. And if you stumbled upon this episode and it's not the end of the year, it doesn't matter. What we do at EMI is we have quarterly goals for everybody on the team and we monitor them every week. And then at the end of the 90 days, hopefully they're done and we go into new ones or if they're not, we can carry them over. But you can use this process every 90 days to stay super plugged in and to create an extraordinary engineering career for yourself. And I hope to continue to help you do that through all of our content channels at the Engineering Management Institute. I hope you enjoyed the episode today. Goal setting is one of the most powerful things that you can do in your career as an engineer, because if you don't have clear goals, you may be going off on a tangent in your career, spending many hours that are not going to get you to where you ultimately want to go. Please consider subscribing to our channel here. We do put out videos like this on a weekly basis to help engineers become better managers and leaders. I'll see you next week.